We have started discussing the spiritual diseases that have a grip over our heart and we said that most of those diseases what we can see is it has the opposite of it in other words the heart of a salik the heart of a human being is never free there is never a vacuum in his heart he is either going to have a good quality in his heart or there will be a bad quality in his heart and this is the kashmakash as we call it in Urdu this is the internal fight the salik especially will feel in him at times the good quality will overpower the bad quality and at times the bad quality will take the lead and this is where we have to be very careful when we try to tread the path of the soul and when we want to clean our heart, to purify our heart so that in the day of Qiyamah we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a salbi salim which is the main objective that we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart on the day of Qiyamah Last week we did talk about Zuhd Zuhd which is a spirituality of renouncing the world we had a discussion on that last week and to recall we quoted Imam Ahmad bin Hanbar rahmatullah alayhi who said there are three levels of renunciation one is the ordinary layman who will abstain from what is haram he will renounce this haram thing the second one is a, many the, the, the elite who will abstain from Israf they won't expand things those things which are unnecessary they will get rid of it their heart is not attached to those things they live a very simple life but then there is another one, another level which is the Akhas al Khawas, the Ahlullah, they will abstain from everything that will divert attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where all the maladies come in, the, in the light of the Sawuf. There are two things that can destroy a human being, a salik. When a person has Hubbudja, that is where he strives to get fame. The second one is Hubbudunya, where he strives to acquire the wealth for the world. This is a topic on its own. All of my Islam have written a lot on that. But what I want to discuss today is the quality, the opposite quality of Zuhud. Zuhud is you get rid of the world. You don't keep anything with you. You renounce the world. But the other one is Bukh. Bukh is the quality of keeping the world with us. The opposite. That is a disease. All of my Islam explains the definition of Bukh is to withhold things, but to withhold things for which you have a love, love for wealth, we withhold it, and you don't let it go, especially when there is a need to spend from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when there is a need to spend, we withhold our wealth, our money or whatever, we don't spend it, and also what happens, we do not do kind words, this is a bad culture book, let me explain it, for example, Sharia tells us to give the tax. And this is the Teji Damasla. Many of us go through that. When the time for the tax comes, we start making all type of calculation. What we try to do now? Um, we try to increase our debt so that our net asset decreases. So that we've got to give less the tax. Typical, especially when we are in business, we can see that we take unnecessary credit. Then we run to the mall, we have, we have used our credit card today. What can we do for that? The all those tricks that we make, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. This is a typical issue that every Ramadan we see to these people. Some people will say, uh, we, we went to pay our zakat, we look at the value of the gold. Because we went to value it according to the gold. Which did the value of gold go down so that our nisab goes down? The all type of tricks come when it comes to zakat. In the same way, for the Qatul Fit, which is wajib, our heart doesn't want to give it. Yet this is not our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wealth. We are just a trustee of this wealth. But yet we don't want to give. Just like somebody appoints you as a trustee and he tells you, here's my money in my bank account, give this money to so and so. Why? It's not your money, it's for him. Why you don't want to give his money? Why we don't want to distribute his money? It's not our money. We are just a trustee. Even our body is not ours. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If our body is ours, we can control our body. Simple question we ask a person, how many times our heart beats per minute? We don't know. We don't know. 
How many sets we did yesterday? We don't know. If we control our body, we are supposed to know, we should have planned it. This proves that we don't have planned it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who planned our body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows how many heartbeats we're going to have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know how many steps we're going to make. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know how many dukma we're going to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know the condition of our heart, our lungs, our liver. So, the same way, this wealth that is in our possession, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not ours. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is al kareem who has given us all those things, he says in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who got iman on the invisible, وَيُنْفِقُونَ مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ And who stand part of what we have given them. Turn down the word of the Qur'an. Who stand of what we have given. Mimma razaqnahum. The mean there is for ba'athiya in Arabic. That is thought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling us to give hundred percent. Unless our iman is like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, who has given an unparalleled example in history in the battle of Tabuk, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the sahaba to come and bring money in Masjid al-Nabawi because they got to organize the greatest expedition. This is where Sajid Rasulullah has gone, is to move to fight the Romans. Right? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and got everything he had. In other words, 100%. His zakat was 100%. But that is a very high standard. Allah SWT is asking 2.5%. Not 100%. It is reported that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, when he got everything in Masjid in Nabawi, he started touching on the wall. His wife asked him, what are you talking now? We have given, you have given everything in the Masjid and Ababi. What else are you looking in this house? There's nothing here. You see, I remember, once I used a needle. After I finished using this needle, I put it, those days we didn't have concrete walls. It was a big farm tree or whatever they were using. I put it there. I'm looking for this needle also to give it a pass. This is a standard that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala said. The same battle that Umar al-Faruq radiallahu ta'ala said, today I'm going to supersede Abu Bakr Siddiq. He took 50% of what he had, he said, how much? 50%, which is again more than 2.5%. He said, today I'm going to supersede Abu Bakr Siddiq. When he came to, to Masjid and Nabawi, he said, I'll never be able to beat Abu Bakr. This hard to give Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala has really set up a very high standard for us. Even as that Umar radiallahu ta'ala, when he got Khilafat, that he started crying. He said, I had two, two precedents before me, two predecessors before me, who have set up such a high standard I cannot meet. And this is the same as that Umar radiallahu ta'ala, we gave the example last week, where Jumma, Salah, Khutbah, he came late. People asked me, hey, I am you why are you coming late? He said that I have one clothes on me, on me. I washed it for each other Jumma. It was wet. I had to wait for it to be dry so that I can come in the khutbah. This type of life of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who was the Hamid of Mu'minin, who was the Amir of half of the world of those days, who was the Amir of the expansion of the world with such 150 square meters per day, no civilization achieved that. Yet he had only one clothes, and he is telling us that Abu Bakr Siddiq, oh Abu Bakr, I cannot match you. What was the level of Abu Bakr? And this was the level of Abu Bakr, what was the level of Rasulullah? This is how we must deduct what is the halat of our heart when it comes to God. What God? We think we're making God. We are not making God. We are not even the end. We are very far, far, far from the standard that Sharia is waiting from us. So Imam Ahmad bin Hamba, he's saying that there are three levels. Those that even, anything that diverts them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will destroy. They will get rid of it. I give you the example that the Quran mentioned of Hazrat Sulaiman, who was a king. He's the greatest king ever, the world ever witnessed. It comes in a hadith that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Masjid in Nabawi. A shaitan was serving him while he was in Namaz. He got hold of the shaitan, put him with the pillar, and told him that if it was not because of my brother Sulaiman, who asked for Allah, oh Allah, give me such an empire, such a kingdom that nobody has, I would have locked you up, I would have up to the dear time, my children would have pelted you, beat you, troubled you. But if I do that, which means I would have a control over another kingdom, the kingdom of the Jinnah. Because of that, I'm giving you. Sahir Bukhari. This is what This is put for thought. Who was the Surah Islam? So, Hazrat Sulaiman, the horses were disturbing him, mentioned the Quran, and he got rid of his horses as well. Anything that disturbed somebody, 
in Nabi is deep when something disturbs them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even this they will renounce it. This is what the quality of the Zuhd is. It's a great quality that a Muslim can develop in him. But the opposite of it, our heart is so attached to the world and we don't want to get rid of one thing also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, beautiful example, say whatever comes out of the son of Adam is a metaphor of this dunya. Allah But if you excrete up, this is what the world is all about. The Prophet has given us this example, a metaphor, to compare what this world is all about, whatever comes out of the human being, this is what this world is all about. If you might remember once in my daughter Bukhari, my teacher, Mawlana Fazl Rahman Fab, we can achieve calculation. He told us, think about this world. Think about this world, what this dunya is all about. He said, how many billion people you have? Say we got one billion people, six billion people, five billion, five, six, you say five billion people. If everybody, now I'm just giving an example for us to think. If he gets rid of his excreta, his urine, every day say one kilo. Six billion kilos go in this one. I won't say much. Six billion, and we're running after this one. This is what this world is all about. This is what this whole world is all about. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went for Miraj and then he came back, he said, this world is like one grain in a desert. One grain of sand in a desert. Oh, another hadith to this effect. He compares it with the wing of white fly. That is insignificant. But the quality of stinginess, miserliness, midalliness, what we call bukh, this is such a quality that makes us sick upside down. We think upside down. It is such a bad quality, such a bad quality, such a bad quality that the Sufyan Ikram says, this is a quality that takes you away from Allah. This is a bala. This is a curse when a person develops the disease of miserliness. Why? Because miserliness, miserliness, nidaliness, stinginess, buh is such a quality which is developed when a person has developed love for what? And when a person develops love for wealth, what happens? His mind starts deviating away from Allah. His mind is a chapter now. I got one pound, how can he become two pounds? When he got two pounds, how can he become three pounds? And he goes to Amasik, 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 until time has come, it's time to leave this world. And he looks at what his empire is, and he leaves it with regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given two examples of the Quran, the example of Qarun. He has so much wealth that when the, the earth split, there are so many people to carry his key. The few people needed to carry his seed, leave alone his wealth, where he used to lock it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the example of Qarun in the Quran. And the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Quran is Rasul Lahab. Abi Lahabi Watab. Ma'ana anhu ma'luhu wa ma'tasab. Whatever he has collected, I will benefit him. He was one of the leading chiefs of the Banu Quraysh in Makatul Mukarrama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given two examples in the Quran. When a person amassed wealth, what happens to them? How they destroy their wealth and the Akhirah as well. So this quality of miserliness is a very, very bad quality. There are two types of this quality. The quality of book, the quality of miserliness, the quality of stinginess, there are two. A person can be miser regarding the hukukullah and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, we are stingy, we don't want to spend when it comes to fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the banda of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Example. To spend the cart. I give you the example. We get a trick in our heart. We don't want to take out the money from the sample that has come. So that's what we say. We look which masjid is giving us the less. One pound? No, no, we'll tell you three pounds. No, Leicester is a better calculation. There's more more than I in Leicester. So it's better to go according to Leicester calculation. This is the way we think because we don't realize Allah has cursed us, may Allah protect us against this curse. We have developed the quality, the disease of miserliness in us. It's a very bad disease. We don't realize it, it is in our heart. This is a disease that Ulama Kiram says will make us run away from Allah. This is very important. So, this is the quality. The second quality, the, the another quality is the hukuk al ibad, the quality of nafaka. Our, our body got a right on us. If we have to spend, even this also we don't want to spend. No, no, no. It's enough. One could is enough. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, why don't want to spend? Provided it is within the arena of sharia. Our family, 
our family, do we fulfill the life of our wife, our children? Even this we are very stingy. We don't want to stand. In the time of Rasulullah وسلم, there was a great, there was a chief of Makkah, his name was Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu, great Sahabi, Jalilu Sad Sahabi, the father of Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala, and he was the father of one of the wife of Rasulullah sallam. his daughter was married to Rasulullah sallam. great personality, but he had this quality in him. So his wife, him, went to Rasulullah sallam. The Ya Rasulullah she did sing it. Rasulullah sallam says, take from his wealth, this is it. but to what the norm you're supposed to take, because don't exceed the limit. If we need two roti a day, take the amount for two roti. Don't then take for five roti. Example I'm giving. So Rasulullah Sallam says, take without his permission. From there there's a very important masla. If a person is stingy, Sharia allows you to corner him to pay his account. This is why Abu Bakr Siddiq Allah Ta'ala, when he came to power, when he came to the Khilafah, the very first problem he had to face is his stinginess. The first fitna that appeared in the time, in the Ummah, was the quality of stinginess. People refused to take that. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala tried to bring Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala to reason. So why use it? Why? The first says, even if it is a rope, they, they were supposed to give it in Baitul Ma'ad, they are not going to give it, I'm going to make jihad with it. Hazrat Umar wanted to come to his own, but the Muslims are reading Salah, why do you make that? This is the quality of stinginess, the very, very first sickness that appeared in the Ummah was the quality of stinginess. It's not a mamuli thing. Everybody sitting here, maybe if we test our heart, it has to be enough. Very important. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, the very first jihad he made was against this disease, the quality of stinginess. People didn't want to take a cast. So this is how serious it is the quality of stinginess is need to be cured. Then there is another question. This a person, if he doesn't respond to cure this, the quality of stinginess that is not his time to satisfy the hukukullah and the hukukul ibad is a sin, according to the ulama and the fuqaha. The second quality of the second category is stinginess in muru'a. Muru'a means manliness. That is what your heart as a man, you must have the heart to give. But you don't have this heart to give. That is another disease. But this one is not simple. But it is recommended that you get rid of this disease as well. For example, you are a creditor. Somebody owes you. Contractually, you can claim your money from him. But Sharia tells you, give him a respite. It comes in a hadith. There was a person, when he used to send people to collect his whatever people owe him, he used to tell his collectors, if the person cannot pay, tell him I have forty money. So it was on time, his Muninji or whatever used to go and collect the money. So going there, person could not pay. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes sense of general disquality of his. Allah says, He developed the quality of forgiving when people transgress his life. Me, I'm more worthy of forgiving him when he transgress my right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith of the full Islam. Because you have removed this quality, this certain quality, which is mustahab, which is not even for us, mustahab, he has got rid, he has developed this quality of getting rid of this quality of miserliness. His heart was not attached to this death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made faithful on this quality for him then, reported in hadith. How important it is to get rid of this quality of Miserliness in our heart, regardless. All of my explain, it's not only with money. Say, for example, people come to your house. People come, they come with children, now you've got a beautiful carpet and a mess on the carpet. You have a right to get angry. But the quality of muruat, the quality of manliness demands that you must make your guests feel at home. This is the beauty of the Arab. There was an Arab, when his son is mentioned in Hidayah, his name was Hatim Tai. Maybe you know about it. His generosity was known throughout Arabia to such an extent he was prepared to give his head also, if people wanted his head. It was so much generous he was, Hatim Tai. Well known. 
person is a legend of Arabia. So, the Arab, when you go to him, look the, the, the beauty of the Arabic language. May Allah reward the Arab for his quality. Waqi, I'm telling you, the generosity of the Arab is something of its own. Something of its own. He can be a multi billionaire. But if an Arab likes him, the generosity, he'll go out of his way. And when the Arab says to Ahlan wa Sahlan, we cannot translate that in English or even Urdu. Ahlan means when, it, when you go to an Arab, he will tell you Ahlan. From the word Ahl. Ahl in Arabic is that you are in his progeny. You know, you, you are part and parcel of this progeny, of this family, of this Khandan. Was Sahlan and remain part of this Khandan. How are you going to translate that in English? You can't. When an Arab tells you Ahlan, or Sahlan, or you go in Saudi Airlines, they put there, Ahlan or Sahlan. This is a quality that Sharia is telling us. The quality of miserliness is out. This is how we are supposed to be. Have this manliness to overlook. And our heart is not attached with this topic. And it happens. At times we have then children coming. And we make all the musty. And at times we get angry. At times with our own children we get angry. We just bought a new car and now he's cutting on the seat. This is a defect in the heart. Our heart is attached with this topic. Our heart is attached with this topic. We have to analyze our disease before we start hitting our child. But we think upside down, why? Because, as I said earlier on, it is such a disease that turns us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we start turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hubbu dunya comes in our heart, hubbu Allah comes out of the heart. And this is the antithesis of the soul. If a salik wants to be a reform himself, wants to purify himself, he wants to have to understand this disease as well. Another example, people say, all of my saints, you want to, for example, by a child. Somebody passed away in your family. You want to buy a coffin. All of my saints, this is not a time to haggle about the price. Don't haggle about the price. Because this is supposed to remind you of that. You're haggling about the price because of the love for the world. This 50 p means a lot to you. But what we are not realizing, the lesson we are supposed to take. In the same way, when we want to buy for Bani meat, which is an ibadat. Oh, this one is 65 pounds. Hey, but if you do in Bangladesh, it's 75 pounds. No, but England is 160 pounds. Now, what is happening? It's a serious matter, brother. It's a very serious matter for us who want to reform our heart. Let the butcher who wants to make his money, that's in his place. He has accept that. The law of supply and demand comes into place. The higher the, the demand and the lower the, the price, the, 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 the supply, the price will go up. That's a market mechanism. But besides the point, exploiting of the market, the disease we have in our heart, it comes once a year to revive the sunnah of Hazrat Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. The sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet the quality of miserliness is overtaking our brain. Think about it. Uloma has given hidayat on that as well. This is not the place to haggle. Because it proves that we have a spiritual disease. This 20 pound we spending, we are not spending it for the pleasure of Allah. We are not spending it to give peace of Allah. We're spending how much meat can we get, maximum meat. But this is a typical disease. We don't realize it. Every year we go through this disease. If we haven't got the means, that's something else. If we haven't got the means, that's something else. You go out to your means. But if you have the means, then you must take this spiritual disease. Now, another disease that we have, very important, all of my faith, is we are a bit shoddy. When we want to give zakat, we are a businessman. That can't not necessarily be in terms of money. We can give our stock as well. It is well known we give the inferior one, the tetra. That's a big disease. Again, this disease got to do with miserliness. Our heart is so attached with our commodities in the shop that we want to get rid of because there's no garage to come and take it. So what to do now? Three years is in the stock. We got to rotate our stock. Therefore, get rid of it. The poor will will enjoy it. What we don't like, what our customer don't like, those who are well off don't like, this is what we are keeping. Again, this is the quality of miserliness in the heart that needs to be cured if we want to be a phallic exercise. 
So there are two types of this disease of book. One is we refuse to stand for fulfilling the haqq of Allah and the haqq of the ibad of Allah. The second one is the quality of manlyhood. What a manliness demands that even though it is our right, we overlook this right. We overlook this right. This also is very, very important too. A person wrote to Mona Shafari Tani, Rahmatullahi, and told him, Hazrat, when I stand I feel it heavy to pop out the money. Mona says, no problem. As long as it is not against fulfilling a compulsory right. Yani fulfilling the haqq of Allah or the haqq of Allah. No problem. Look at the vision of Mona Shafari Tani, Rahmatullahi. Why? We have to think about it also. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has put those things around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given many examples. Zuyina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have alert, we have made beautify this world for you. We can express praises to women, your son, your gold and silver, your horses well bred your cattle and your agriculture. Allah mentioned the Quran. Allah has put it in our heart. So to have a natural inclination towards this is normal. But the difference is we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put two things in us. Allah has created us with this world, with faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he has molded us with Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, he blew the roof. The ruh is something direct from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ruh always wants to pull us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the quality of the earth pulls us towards the dunya. It's a question of balancing the two. This is what you have to understand. This is why the quality of miserliness is a normal thing. Hubu dunya is a normal thing. But as long as it is being monitored. As long as it's being controlled. We don't trespass the haqq of Allah. We don't trespass the hukuk of Ibad. Then it's okay. When everything was brought to, when the, the Persian Empire collapsed, during the time of Hazrat Umar al-Farooq, when the traders from the castle of Pesach, of the, 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 the emperor of Persia was brought to Manila Munawwara, so much gold, so much gold was brought there for the Tumar of the outside. And he said, this is God for the Tumar of the Lord. Wallah, I am not telling you that you don't love wealth. Wallah, I'm not asking you to take away, take it away from us. I said, this love, love it. But what we are asking you, Allah, don't make this wealth be a trial for our religion. Look at the deep-sightedness of Hazrat Umar of Farooq Taking human nature into account. He himself. You know the level of Zohd he has described his life. But he was taking the awam, the layman into account. This is what he said in Masjid al As long as wealth does not come as a means of destructing our deen, then it is okay. But the moment our, our heart start developing this love, we have this control over our head. Then it becomes haram. It's a borderline. This is what we have to understand as far as fiqh is concerned, as far as the sawuf is concerned, this is what the ulama haram explained to us. It is very, very important to draw a borderline. This is why this person, he went to Moras of Rikhani, he said, I feel a pricking in my heart when I got to take out money. Moras of Rikhani says, no. this one, Dr. Abdul Haysab, Ahmadullah, says, that this pricking in your heart that you feel, it is a key to success. It is only when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes you. It is a sign of Iman. It is a sign that you feel when you do something wrong or something good. So when you take out the money, you feel, is it right or not? You have to weigh the love for wealth and the love for moderation. Love for moderation is a person doesn't stand keeping for the rainy days. It is jahiz according to Sharia. Because the hadith of Rasulullah, there is a lot of shit behind that. I don't have time to go into the details. 30 minutes is over already. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Man aata lillah wa mana'a lillah 
فقد استكمل إيمانه. Beautiful hadith Allah Akbar. Whoever gives to Allah, not because of ostentation to show off. Whoever does not give, he will hold. That is not out of miserliness, but for Allah. He has completed his iman. Look this balance. So here Bukhari is a study. Look this balance. You have to understand what is miserliness. You have to identify the disease. Once you identify the disease, then we are able to make our Islam. And you have this balance in our thinking. Then you have your three groups of people. If you want to satisfy yourself with the bare minimum, inshallah you get to Jannah, but then will you be among the Ashab al Qareeb to Allah? If you want to be the seventh heaven with the Anbiya, with the Siddiqin, then we got to opt for the third category. Anything that diverts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get rid of it. But if you want to the second, then you must have your Masla, you don't go for Islam. But the point is, Sharia applies, the general rule of Sharia is, we got to get rid of this type of miserliness, we must to think about it. There's a lot of balance. A lot of balance in Sharia. Sharia has taken human nature into account. Very, very important thing to keep in mind. There's so much I want to speak on. So many Muslim Masail on in miserliness. But there's a thick aspect of it. Time is over. But this is such a disease that at times you don't speak right. There was a person who wants to buy, buy watermelon. Huh? Buy a watermelon. So he asked the brother, how much a watermelon? And I told him two pounds. Can you make it one pound? I have to take it one pound. He said one pound. You can make it fifty cents. I said, one pound I give you. Now you have 50 cents. Take it. Say, give me two. <laughs> this is the quality of my other videos. You want to have much. Get in, get in, get in. That is very bad disease. We have to test it ourselves. That is over there. So much I want to talk. How do we get rid of this disease? Let me give you this, what the ulama have explained, and then we will finish. First, I've taken from many ulama their qual. He used to think about mouth regularly, death. When you think about death, the love of the dunya will go away. Other ulama say, think that it takes you a lifetime to collect what you have. The effort you have put to collect, to amass, to build this empire, you have time has done. For you to catch up with time is very difficult. By the time you are 40, you build up the empire, you get diabetes, you get pressure, you get this disease and that disease, you can't even enjoy it. So why are you wasting your time after this world? The third point is take the habit of increasing your lila. That is, give more lila. When you give more lila, the love for money will get out of our heart. Fourth point, realize that a person who is miserly, who is stingy, who is a bakhil, people will hate him. Even the Bukhala among themselves, they hate each other. They hate each other. These are few things that the ulama have given us to think how to get the disease out of our heart. It's a very, very bad disease. This is the very first disease that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala had to fight. And we cannot get rid of this disease. It is in us. We have to show it. When it is on the borderline, when we cannot make the difference, are we loving well, or are we having it for the pleasure of Allah? That means, are we building our empire because we love money? When this is happening, and this pricking in our heart is not taking place. Oh, the pricking is increasing day and day and day and day. You understand what I'm saying? When you take out money, we want to buy, when we want to pay the card, is it pricking our heart inside? Or we are happy to give it. If you are happy to give it, Alhamdulillah, this is a sign of Zuhd. But if you are not happy, then we develop in the quality of Bukh, which is a very, very bad habit, which leads to Jahannam. When a person, listen to this hadith of Rasulullah, a person who at the time of death, he is not happy, he doesn't have the desire to meet Allah, he is a Jahannami. A Bakhil, this is the quality of a Bakhil, a person who is stingy at the time of death, he doesn't want to leave his house, his beautiful mouth, his oldest empire he built. His heart is too attached to that. Think about this hadith of Rasulullah. It's a guaranteed Jahannam. Ma'udhu Billah Nazareth. Guaranteed Jahannam. This is how serious it is, this quality of Mahathirinah. So it's very good we develop the quality of God. When we develop the quality of God, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a gift from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting in my mind, I'm telling you. When you develop the quality of Zohar, that is, you renounce the world, then whatever comes in your way, you start giving it, distributing it. Then Allah bless you with the quality of generosity. Allah Allah. The quality of generosity is a quality that emanates of one of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Al-Kareem. What quality are we developing? The sifat of Allah, of course it's not going to be like sifat of Allah, just like a one drop of water from the ocean, what is it? But when you drop, put this one water drop in the ocean, it gets a cycle of ocean. I'm not comparing ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is it. What I'm saying is the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is sharing this to us. Part of his quality, the quality of being generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are, I, I want, if I start now with generous, I'm going to go another hour on the topic, but there's no time. If you read the life of great, great wali, how generous they were, how generous they were. It's unreal. It doesn't flash your mind how generous they were. That's the quality. The favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we adopt the quality of zone, we get rid of the quality of miserliness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best out, bless us with the quality of being a kareem, of being generous. And this is the direct year from the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the quality of karam, which comes from the sifat of kareem. What a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we develop it. Subhanallah.